Tesla Cybertruck is here to stay, here to last. Let's get it. It's electric, baby. Everyone hates Tesla. This episode, the Cybertruck gets a brain. Hurricane weather affects Tesla vehicles. We've got theories about the RoboTaxi reveal and find out why Swedish Teslas have weird license plates, beginning with the Tesla Cybertruck, which has finally learned, sorry, received full self-driving capabilities in an over-the-air update. With this on the last day of the month, Tesla completed their entire list of September 2024 roadmap accomplishments that we saw released by the company's AI team earlier this month. Tesla says this update also includes the end-to-end -end neural network stack for highway driving, as promised, and there are some upcoming improvements like earlier and more natural lane change decisions, improved performance in parking lots and at intersections and stops, and introduction of speed profile incoming. Tesla says this is an early access build to enjoy but use additional caution and remain attentive. And that and now that guys, that's because it's still early in the program. And so the actual car has to learn how to drive in that type of body and that type of model. So it takes some time for that to actually happen. Let's continue. That kind of gets at what makes this release so exciting. We have this very large, very heavy, very pointy vehicle driving around all by itself with no hands on the wheel. It's awesome. Always advertisement. When am I going to get the premium, right? <laughs> it's also kind of scary. Now, what the hell is end-to-end -end and why is that a big deal? Well, the end-to-end -end part of the stack means that rather than hand coding all the decision-making directly into FSD, Tesla now relies upon AI, which has been trained on hundreds of thousands of hours of footage gathered by its fleet. This So that's pretty interesting, right? The AI or the artificial intelligence is writing the code versus a human writing it. And also, guys, it's not scary. It's only scary if you're a scary person. Like, the statistics show that it's safer. Like, now, if you decide to be scared, even still, then that's just your problem, right? Some people are scared to get on the plane. Plane safe. They're not scared to get in the car, but they're scared to get on the plane. That's just in their head. Mm, can't do nothing about that. This allows the vehicle's onboard computer to make decisions, hopefully correct decisions. It was FSD version 12 that brought the end-to-end -end stack to city streets, and that version was widely considered to be a significant improvement. But until now, the highway driving stack was still running FSD version 11. With this new update, end-to-end -end AI will now be used on the highway, which should be a considerable improvement. As for the rest of the fleet running FSD, Tesla's AI lead, Ashok Aluswamy, says we are close to an early release build for remaining platforms and will release to internal employees in the next week or so. Tesla's at Cybertruck account comments, finally proud owner of Brain, loving it so far. As for how well the Cyberbrain is working so far, it's not bad. It's pretty near as good as any other self-driving Tesla, but with a few rough edges that will show themselves on occasion. Cutting turns too hard, driving on the shoulder, driving over medians, hitting curbs, struggling with off-ramps. It's not anything that we haven't seen before, but it's just that little bit more unnerving to watch than when you know the added size and weight of the Cybertruck, plus the added consequences if anything goes wrong. Responsibility is the key word here. Speaking of responsible people, we all know Cybertruck has been a favorite toy recently for all kinds of celebrities. Now, can you imagine all this attention directed to them driving with FSD? That's coming. Now, see, that's pretty cool because at the end of the day, that's a lot of marketing that Tesla receives for no money, right? Like they don't pay the celebrities to have the car and pay for them to promote the car. It's just something that people want to do on the culture because it's more culturally cool or it's exclusive or it's rare. And so people add that. And that's added value that they get from it, meaning Tesla, the company, without marketing. Our marketing budget is still zero to none, right? We don't have a large marketing budget. Of course, a lot of people are trying to get Elon to change that. And so that's why it's a little versus none. But at the end of the day, we have a lot of self-promotion and Elon's pretty smart with it. So, And a lot of companies spend more money on marketing than they actually spend on research and development of their own product. So at Tesla, we actually spend more money in research and development in versus marketing. In front of hundreds of millions, perhaps even over a billion people now. They will want to flex with their Cybertruck driving itself, and it's the perfect timing from Tesla as well, since FSD seems to finally be on a level that won't shoot Tesla in the foot with the publicity. With all this buzz around the Cybertruck, the Tesla AI team took a chance of subtly hinting towards something big coming in the future. They comment, and just like that, the last fledgling leaves the next. And when Dennis asked about the semi, they say, but wait, there's more. A little down below, the account adds season finale, not final season. What do you think it means? For us, the most likely explanation seems to be that the Tesla semi will be the next big project for Tesla's self-driving team. We've seen the Tesla semi videos near Giga Nevada that run with a senior suite on top, which naturally means they are collecting ground data for validation like they do with their passenger fleet vehicles. Or they are testing systems for the semi to run autonomously. 
In trucking, the effects of such an autonomous or even semi-autonomous vehicle would be huge. Perhaps a strong driver assist like that would have also avoided the crash back in August for the semi burnt down after veering off the road for unknown reasons. Now, our European correspondent Jan reports that the semi team can't comment on the crash or Tesla semi getting autopilot or FSD when he asked them at the IAA show, but it only makes sense that it is coming. Would the Tesla semi be able to adopt the same FSD already available on the smaller Teslas with ease? Without a trailer, we think it's likely. With a trailer, however, a whole new set of problems arise. A Tesla. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty hard at the end of the day. Imagine that FSD with the actual semi-trailer. That could be a little bit complicated, but that would be a great challenge for the artificial intelligence to take on because, of course, humans, we know how to do it. So it's up to the computer to figure it out. That's what we want the artificial intelligence to be able to do is figure these things out just like humans can do them. And so at the end of the day, I think that this is a good development. Very interesting. A lot of people feel on and off about the semis. But for me, as far as the semis are concerned, it's a very dangerous vehicle, just like the diesel and the ice, just on braking alone. You ever seen when you're driving those exclusive ramps for actual semi trucks when they go downhill in case something happens to the brakes? So it could be very dangerous. It's called a runoff ramp. And so they have that. They have to build them into the road because the vehicle is still dangerous like that. And so when we get these new vehicles, especially a vehicle like this electric vehicle for the Tesla Semi, we have generative braking and it's different. So it becomes a little bit more safe, especially too. The Optimus, or let's just say the FSD full self-driving, will assist the driver in driving those long miles that they drive. And so that's good for us. Let's continue. Tesla caught fire in a garage in Florida after the flooding from Hurricane Helen, and it was all recorded on a Nest Home camera. Unfortunately, the entire house burned down as a result. In this case, the fire clearly starts from the bottom of the vehicle where the battery pack is, and it started with a sudden loud bang with flames quickly rising up on the outside of the Tesla. Jeez, I wonder what happened in that case. One car, now we about to go crazy. Definitely not helping here. Now, keep in mind that we do not know yet if the battery pack itself might have been damaged or not, or if the vehicle was charging at the time of this incident. Did you know Tesla has a website page dedicated to submerged vehicles? The submerged vehicle guidance helps us to understand the risks, including outlining steps after the Tesla submerging, like treat your vehicle as if it has been in an accident and contact your insurance company, do not attempt to operate the vehicle until an authorized shop has inspected it, safely tow or move the vehicle at least 50 feet from the structure or other combustible materials such as other cars and personal property. Now, keep in mind that not all Teslas and EVs can catch on fire as soon as they touch water. Quite the opposite is true, actually. We have seen plenty of Teslas go through floods where fossil fuel cars just die right in the middle of the road. Jan has a whole thread of these videos, and we know even Elon Musk has seen these as he liked the post, yet didn't feel the need to remind anyone that EV drivers should still avoid water when possible. None of these Teslas in the video have been reported as totaled, let alone catching on fire. Now, it's the salt water and longer submersion that can likely produce something like what we saw on the video. The largest study into battery fires in the world that has so far looked into 511 different EV battery fires since 2010 has found that 28 of those incidents were due to a submersion in a body of water. Now, 489 of those fires displayed a jet-like flame, which is caused by flammable gases escaping under pressure, which seems very much like what we see here as well. Tesla has sent out invites for the October... Okay, so that's very interesting. And now we have the We Bot, Robot, excuse me, We Robot, We Bot, <laughs> We Bot and We Robot. So that event is coming up tomorrow, guys. I'm extremely happy. Of course, it's tomorrow for me, um, but it's October 10th. I'm in the future, guys. But let's see this, and then we'll get out of here with the video. I want to end it, but yeah, you guys got to know about We Robot. Let's get it. We're tenth Robo Taxi event taking place in Los Angeles to shareholder raffle winners and online influencers. They call the event We Robot, and Elon says this will be one for the history books. Of course, we had our tinfoil hat ready to go to try and find out any teasers the invite image would hold. It seems Jan was the first to recognize this similarity on the Robo Taxi ride hailing app mockup we saw back in April on the company's Q1 earnings call. Then we decided to play around with the image itself, changing the contrast and other settings, and found out there is something like a streetlight hidden in the image. The best explanation we've heard for this so far comes from Rudy, who says it's a reminder that after you come to from a bender and you're flat on your back looking up at the street lamp, to get a robo taxi. In another mm -hmm. approach, we got these inner circles that seem like a robo taxi wheel. We've played around with the thought of the outer circles giving a Morse code message, but we didn't get much other than the letters V, N, and D. If there's any significance there, we are missing it, so let us know. The real head scratcher, however, is what looks to be a binary code in the middle of the image. At first glance, it looks to be just 0101 everywhere. 
But playing around with the image settings, it's revealed that the numbers actually change with the lines like 0111, 00, and so on. We haven't yet put the whole of it together, but we're working on it. So help us if you can, drop your insights in the comments, or see what people do with their time. <laughs> invite with an open plus one spot, Jan promised to jump on a plane today from Europe and make it to the event, whatever it takes. Tesla is also hosting a new referral contest for a chance of attending the RoboTaxi event. Every two complete referrals after August 24th to October 3rd will get one entry US only. Tesla now sells more EVs in Sweden than- Wow. Well, I wish I would have known that, guys. I really didn't know that there was an actual referral and also that you could go yourself. I would have tried to apply and swing for the fence and I would have left Thailand in a quick, fast, in a hurry. Just for that. After that, I would have been back overseas. But again, Elon for the win. Everyone hates Tesla. I think this was a great video. Very interesting about the Cybertruck and Cybertruck's full self-driving. So let's see where that actually goes out and how it pans out. I think it's going to be interesting to see that this new body with the actual Cybertruck will be same as the Robo Taxi. When that Robo Cab comes out, it would require the same type of training in order for it to figure out its way with its body. But the body's more similar possibly to a Model Y or a Model 3. So hopefully the learning curve is not that curvy. But guys, I appreciate you for being here. Everyone hates Tesla. It's electric. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next installment. And I can't wait for the event. Let's get it. I'll probably go live.